Who are you? I am Keith Stokes. Um, Keith Jerome Fraser Stokes, the second. Put a full government out like last time. Um, I am a producer, casting assistant, interviewer, um, hopefully upcoming director. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Why do you create? I create because I don't know what else to do. Um, nothing else seems, nothing else feels natural. Um, I try different routes uh, in terms of just, I've tried the STEM route, I've tried everything else in terms of what I want to do, what I, what I felt like I needed to do. And in terms of just creating, whether it be photography, um, movies, uh, just anything, it, it always just felt like home to me. Tell us a little bit about your home and where you're from. Um, yeah, so I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, born and raised. Uh, I stayed there for 22 years, actually, or 21 years, I should say, 21 years. Um, yeah, Jacksonville is about what you expect. Honestly, it's not the, I'm not gonna say it's not the best place to be from. Um, it definitely does have a soul. It, it, the city is, it can be dangerous, um, but for the most part, it's, it's where I was raised, so it's always gonna be home for me. I'm always gonna love it just because I have to. Um, but yeah, the city, it definitely has its own culture. Um, but little did I know, I was at a film fest back home in uh, June, and the, the movie culture out there is heavy, bro. I, I didn't even know. It's not black films, but it's just, it's films in general. It's a lot of creativity that I didn't know about. But it's, um, it's a place where if you're there, it, it's because you want to be. And you're, you're conscious about it. It's not because you got stuck. But it, it's a place where you can be calm, where it feels like home. Like when I'm back home, I always go to, there's this place called Riverside. I always go there to chill out like at the water and just clear my mind and think. It's a place where it, it feels like, when I'm there, I feel like I'm back home because I can't get it anywhere else. So how do you feel when you're in DC and like in the Howard circles and everything like that? Have you found your home here as well? I have, I'm still building my home here. And whether that be with the people, whether that be with the clubs, the organizations that I'm in, um, it, it, I'm definitely adding building blocks slowly and slowly. I've only been here for coming up on two years now. I've only been here for, yeah, for that amount of time. And piece by piece, I'm, I'm slowly starting to come into who I am. And I'm starting to understand the reasons why I came here to not even necessarily be a creative, but to thrive and be successful because um, I couldn't I couldn't do that in Jacksonville it, it wasn't the place for me um, was I expecting to be in DC um, what a year and a half ago now uh, I wouldn't even bet money on it but being here being able to grow within these spaces being on burn being on the short film projects that I'm working on um, those are the building blocks that I'm talking about, but the accessories to them are the people that I'm around, the people that I love, the people that I know, the people that I, I even meet from just burn. These are the people that inspire me to keep going, to keep building, to understand that the place that I'm building here is the one on a genuine foundation. Where do you see yourself really in like the near future, I know we've been saying this five, ten years thing, mm -hmm. but just like with any measure of time that you want to associate, how you know, where do you see yourself? What are, I see myself in a place of happiness and a place of peace. And although I want to say I hope that it comes from me being a film director, genuinely, I hope it comes from just me actually taking the time to make a place for myself where I feel like I'm comfortable and I feel like I'm, I belong there, where I'm 
happy with the people that are around me. I'm happy with the place that I'm at. I don't even necessarily have to, I always say that I want to be rich, but I don't even necessarily have to be rich in the sense where I just hope that the space that I've built, the people that I'm around, the even the environment that I'm in, I'm, I just hope it's a genuinely happy and peaceful place where I've been able to take the time to grow and understand and to learn about more about who I am and to understand the different perspectives of people and just grow in that space and that environment and just be able to be an overall better person. Do you love who you are? Um, understanding how to learn, learn, I'm understanding how to love who I am. And I think for a long time, being back home, I was so focused on getting out that I never took the time to understand who I am in the place, in that place, whether it be home, whether it be here. So being at home, you're comfortable. You don't necessarily have to focus on, I guess, the everyday. Um, it was very, being back home was very like routine to me. I wake up, go to work, go to school, go home, hang out with my friends, whatever. And then when I took myself away from that environment, it was like, I don't know shit. <laughs> I, I don't know what I want. I don't know who I am. I don't know who I want to be around me. I don't know how I want to grow. It's just... Kind of like a kid again. Yeah, pretty much. Like, you don't... It, it's Yeah, you're pretty much a kid again. You're learning how to be an adult. Wouldn't, I'm not even going to necessarily say with, like, no help, but it's just like, this is you. Everything that you do from this point on is on you. No, there, there's nobody to blame. It's scary. Yeah, it, it's scary as hell. And so, I guess when you ask... Um, do I love who I am now? When I say that I'm learning, it's because I'm in an environment now where everything that I do is on me. Nobody is forced to be around me. Nobody is forced to love me. Every person that I talk to, everything, every situation I put myself in, it's because of the choices that I'm making. And I'm young, so I'm not, every choice isn't gonna be perfect. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna mess up sometimes. But I think, to be able to insert myself in these spaces, to be able to insert myself around, or to put myself around people that I know that I love and I know love me back, it definitely helps me build upon that idea of learning to love who I am. I relate to that a lot too, man. I mean, you know, I feel like <clears throat> that moment where we first met last summer was just like a very pivotal point in and definitely in my life, but mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to assume, but just like, I know past that point, I'm really happy with where our friendship has grown. For sure. Especially with our collaboration with this project mm -hmm. even more. So, you know, just to round it out, but really like give your, you know, merit to what you brought to this project. Tell us about your burn experience. Burn was, or is, um, we haven't ended yet. We're still going strong. Um, Burn is the start of my creativity. When I got the job at V, I didn't expect to meet anybody. It was just a regular job because I needed something to do. And that's, that's what I'm saying, like the pay was good. Um, I wasn't working too far. Like it was literally, you go downstairs. That, that's it, it was right in my building. So being able to be in that place and just not expecting to really meet anybody. I wasn't even really expecting to meet anybody from Howard. And then I met Quran, and I don't really know what Quran was on at the time. Um, I didn't know that. That sounded mad disrespectful. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know what this was talking about. Nah, that was mad disrespectful. No, I didn't. Um, the Quran that you guys know, I, I didn't know him. The photographer, Byrne, I, I didn't know that's what he was. Um, that, that was a different venture. I didn't know he was a creative at all. But just um, talking to him more, I was like, he cool. Learning he from Chicago, learning the, just having conversations with him about music, art. It was just, it was really in-depth conversations. I remember randomly, just, just randomly, this was nothing pre-planned. He sent me a DM. He was like, hey, bro, um, I'm working on this documentary piece. Um, 
you're going to be shooting on campus. He was like, you have a really like nice, strong voice, and I would like you to be the interviewer for the project. And I was like, okay. I, to me, my voice sounds like my voice. Like this, it doesn't really resonate how to me how it does to other people. So yeah, um, talked about it at Burn Two. We was camped out at UGF for like three hours, just interviewing people on rotation. I didn't really know what to expect from Burn. Didn't expect it to get here, but seeing how it grew, how it how it's grown, and just how it reflects with people and resonates with them. I didn't even tell you this because I didn't know we were going to talk about it on the documentary, but I was sitting in Starbucks chilling. A random girl walks up to me. Are you Keith? And I was like, yeah. She was like, I saw your burn interview. I was like, damn. Like, I forgot I did that. Like, no, nah, she, um, she told me that she loved my burn interview and how it resonated with her and how she just hopes that I, I'm, I'm doing good and that I'm doing well. And I was like, yo, this shit is reaching. Like... This is not something that I expected at all. Um, it definitely felt good to hear that and just to realize like this idea that we turned into, that we that we made or that just, it, it's, it's real. And of course I understood that it's real, but just having that moment happen to me, it was like, this is, this is an idea in people's heads. Like, they watch the videos, they come to the premieres, like, this isn't just something that a bunch of Howard students made, like, no, this is real, this is burn. And even having that experience at the um, premiere for Burn 2, where people were coming up to me telling me that they were holding back tears, I was like, what, what are we talking about? What are you talking about, you holding back? I was just speaking, I was just talking, like, Karan was asking me questions behind the camera, I was just saying how I felt and so the fact that people are able to watch these interviews and connect with these people on a personal level like Ashanti, Diamond, Abby, the fact that they're able to connect with these people just through a screen, this is the epitome of what we want to burn to be and to see that people are resonating with it in a way that we wanted them to it's amazing and I, I can't think of any other words to describe it but amazing and so I'm really excited to see like where it goes from here and how far it can reach even though we're done well man it's been a it's been a beautiful voyage with you as the voice of burn as literally just you know it's it's just been an honor man and thank you so much for being with us since day one yeah for sure and, uh, yeah man i'm just so inspired and i'm i'm very appreciative to be able to share you know these moments with you and everything like that and you know i'm very very much looking forward to your growth in your own solo career and everything that you aspire to do so thank you man all right there we go